Okay, we're gonna start the last full unit of the year. This one's on the chi-square distribution. It's um we're gonna use this on uh, categorical data, one-way tables and two-way tables. Um, so this week we're gonna do two lessons on uh, goodness of fit, which is the first uh, chi-square test. Then after spring break, we'll get into chi-square test of homogeneity and a chi-square test for independence, or sometimes it's called association. Um, that'll be like a two-way table. So um, let me just kind of show you first what a chi-square distribution looks like. This is pretty much um, what both, all three tests are gonna be based on this curve, the skewed right curve. Basically um, what it's saying is that most of the time we're down here towards like the low end but there is some probability of it being a higher end. So we're gonna use this table C, it's our last table in the, in the formula sheet that we're gonna work on, um, but we're still gonna do phantoms. There's not gonna be an interval on this one, it's gonna be just tests. So we're gonna do phantoms for all three tests. So the first thing we're gonna look at is this chi-squared goodness of fit test. And this goodness of fit test is um, based on this, are our, our births equally likely across the days of the week? Um, a random sample of 150 births gives the following sample distribution. So again, if we look at this, we got a sample size of 150. And what we're looking at here is we're taking a look at uh, the distribution by days. So we got the seven days and the number of births per day. So if we do a quick scan of that, there looks to be some difference, but we're not sure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna do our hypotheses. So in this case, the way our null hypothesis is gonna be set up. Um, we don't have any notation on this one. We are going to say that the null hypothesis is that births are equally likely across the days of the week. So we're going to use the words, the notations. And our alternative hypothesis is going to be that births are not equally likely across the days of the week. So there's our null and our alternative. We're gonna assume that everything is the same and we're gonna try and prove that something's different. So now the expected counts. Since we have a sample size N of 150, we need a probability. This is how we're gonna figure out our expected. And in this case, the way we do that is 150. And if everything is to be believed, our probability, it should be one seventh of them on each day. So that's gonna tell me we're gonna have 21 births per day. So that's our expected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare every single one of these to that number. We're gonna compare all of these to 21.4 or compare every single one of these to 21.4. Okay, so here is the formula. I'll show you first on the formula sheet. Chi squared down here, the weird looking X thing. Chi squared is the difference between observed and expected squared. That makes them positive divided by expected. So my chi squared statistic is gonna be the sum of all of my observes minus my expecteds squared over my expecteds. So what it is, it's gonna be how far is 11 from 21.4? squared divided by 21.4 plus how far is 21, 27 from 21.4 squared over the expected plus 23 minus 21.4 squared over 21.4 plus 26 minus 21.4 squared over 21.4 plus 21 minus 21.4 squared over 21.4 plus 29 minus 21.4 squared over 21.4 plus 13 minus 21.4 squared over 21.4. So let me actually just stop right here and say that when you write this, you're not going to write them all out. You're going to give me the chi squared equals. You're going to give me the first term plus. You're going to give me the last term. And then you're going to put that ellipse in the middle. That's what you're going to do. Um, you show me the first, you show me the last, and then you give me the answer. So in this case, what we're going to find out is, is that chi-squared is going to equal 13.6. If I type that whole thing into the calculator, I'm going to get a chi-squared of about 13.6. Um, degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom, it should seem somewhat familiar. It's going to be your number of categories minus one. 
So in this case, we have seven days of the week minus one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare this 13.6 to this degrees of freedom. The way we do that is we go to table C. We're gonna go to the degree of freedom six row. We're gonna drag our finger across until we find 13.6. 13.6 would be between these two numbers, come up to the top. So what that tells me here is that my p-value is gonna be between 0.025 and 0.05. So we would say at an alpha of 0.05, we'd reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence to support the claim that births are not equally likely, likely across the days of the week. Now, the thing I will tell you is the follow-up question on this is usually who plays the largest role in it? And that's really where your calculator is gonna come in handy. So what I've done already is I've gone ahead and I've put the, I put the um, data into the calculator. So what I have here is I have all of my out, out my observes 11, 27, all the way down to 13. And what I actually did is I put the formula up here in L2. So what I did is I said, how far is my observed L1 from that expected 21.4 squared divided by 21.4 that expected. And what that's gonna give me is it's gonna give me a bunch of component values. And if we take a look at these component values, it looks like the, the two big ones are, looks like it's uh, the first one and the last one. So in other words, when I look at this, the first one and the last one, Saturday and Sunday, and if you look, that actually kind of makes sense. Saturday and Sunday play the largest role in that. Um, it looks like we don't have a whole lot of births on the weekend that it looks like um, a lot of times that uh, those births are kind of earlier on that Friday. So in this case, if you would ask who played the largest role, it'd probably be Saturday or Sunday based on the component value. So. Um, that is our chi-squared goodness of fit test. It is a test that we typically will do on a one sample, on one way table. Again, one way table is this. That's a one way table. It's got just one row of data. Um, what we're gonna be doing next is we're gonna be moving into um, two way tables. Two way tables will have two different categorical variables. And we're gonna do a chi-squared test of homogeneity, sameness, and a chi-squared chi -square test of independence or association, like difference. Um, so they're very similar in the way they're done. In fact, they're done exactly the same. It's just the way the sample is gathered. So it's really important that you read that question. So that'll be for after spring break. So hopefully that helps. Um, please let me know if you have any questions.